Let's talk more about Jonathan Taylor here. Let's get into the news and notes. We'll get into uh, McLaurin's toe as well. And uh, Jonathan Taylor, Dave, you said you moved them into round two, mm -hmm. just being the opportunity, having the opportunity to seek a trade. Uh, certainly not a certainty that he will be traded. What's your read on this situation? I, the, the very first thought I had was, when was the last time a player was given the opportunity to seek a trade and then wasn't traded? And the answer is Austin Eckler. <laughs> yeah. It just happened. <laughs> and, but Eckler got like a new contract. He got a few extra bucks and uh, and he seems happy with it. So that's possible. It's still very possible that Jonathan Taylor stays in Indianapolis, but the fact that he's able to seek a trade, that tells me that the ankle injury really isn't that big of a deal. We don't have to sweat that anymore. And there's potential for him to end up in a significantly better situation than, than where he is now, which is on a team with a rookie quarterback who's a better runner than thrower at this point in his career and could take work away from Taylor. And that makes him a little less desirable than he normally would be. So the, the fact that he could be on a different team uh, puts, puts him right back in round two for me. I would, I would consider him before taking any of the quarterbacks, Mahomes, Hurts, or Allen. Jamie? I, uh, I would just like to see him get left in Philly. <laughs> like, that would be the best. Oh, that would be here. amazing. I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't like the fact that we're so close to the start of the season now, and he might change teams. I don't know if he's really injured. You know, Dave, you said you're not really considering it a huge not deal. Not anymore. Not it's if they're not, letting him seek a trade. But it's not, I mean, it's, obviously it's not a great situation for Taylor. No, no. I, 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 like I said, I think he's going to get drafted in round two. I'm still leaving him in round three. I think there's just, you're, you're still talking about, there's going to be a ramp up period here. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're probably not looking at the best of Jonathan Taylor until maybe like week three, maybe week four. And, to your point, Adam, a doctor has to keep him on the pup list. This isn't just, hey, I'm on the pup list. Thanks. You know, <laughs> like Christian Wilkins, for example, is a good, good, good comparison. He's waiting for a contract. He's a hold in. Right. He's not he's not on the pup list. You know, right. so a doctor has to has to medically put him there. So there's still something wrong with his ankle to some degree. It could be minor. I, I'm with Dave. I, I, I think it's always been about his contract, but there's still there still has to be a reason why he's on the pup list. So. Who knows what the two absences were where he left Indianapolis. One was reportedly to deal with his ankle. One was reportedly for a personal situation. Right. Um, again, knows? you know, we, we don't know what's going on. But I still think you just you, – you have to be a little bit and, – and I know there are different players in different situations. Alvin Kamara is missing three weeks, and we're drafting him in round five. Jonathan Taylor may not be Jonathan Taylor until that point in the season as well, and we're talking about drafting him in round two. Well, where's the most likely destination for him? Is it still Indianapolis? The most likely? I yeah. mean, yeah. if they're asking for a first round pick, they're not getting that. No. And and, and as don't. Dave as Dave brought up, you know, a team that's going to trade for him to give up significant capital is not doing so for a one year rent rental unless it's like again, the Eagles or the Bills, you know, teams that are just looking at okay, we use him for this season and then we win a Super Bowl or at least have a chance to, and then he can be discarded. So I, I think you look at those type of teams, and I put Kansas City in that mix too. I saw Baltimore as a team that, that looked at it. I um, actually did a, a, a Zoom call for one of our St. Jude things with a, a great you know, viewer of ours, Sam. And uh, Sam said, he's a Colts fan. He's like, the Bears make a lot of sense. They have cap space, they have draft capital, and there's the Eberflus connection. You know, I was like, oh, that does make some sense. You yeah. know, if, they, yeah. if they wanted to give you know, Justin Fields a little bit more protection. So... Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of teams. I, I think you know that we probably would not expect. Like you, you rule out Arizona; they're not giving up uh, you know draft capital for a running back. You know teams like that you can get get off the the the, the table. Um, the Jets, you know, I don't think they're doing that. You know teams teams of that nature. But but I I think Miami's obviously got to be in the mix. I think Philly's got to be in the mix. I still think Buffalo, Kansas City, Baltimore would not surprise me either. You know if they Our decide course. to. Uh, Minnesota. How do you feel about and Minnesota? And Minnesota. You know, that that was when, you know, what I was talking about competition. You know, I wonder what they would do if they brought in Taylor and know how much they would use still somebody like Madison, especially early in the season. I, I think that's going to be the big key is what happens early in the season. And don't forget, remember the the Broncos had said if Josh Jacobs was available, they would consider it. That was more if he was the the, the franchise tag was rescinded. I believe that was the story. Yeah. Um again, a team with you know aspirations to be better maybe than we think they are, but they probably view themselves as a Super Bowl contender you know, knowing that they could upgrade that running back room as well. Uh, so what about Deion Jackson or Evan Hull? You guys want to draft a Colts running back at this point? Not particularly. 
I still think Zach Moss by the end of the season will be the one that leads him in carries. Yeah, so maybe, maybe. If, or if, they could they could sign Kareem Hunt. They can trade and, away. And that, uh, and that was that was the other part of it. Yeah, is, is yeah. Kareem Hunt was already rumored to be looking there. So right, he didn't um, he meet with him. Uh, I believe when the 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 Saints scenario right. arose, he was uh, going he there. I don't to know if he actually team? went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want a dark horse team? Yeah, yeah. Carolina. Frank Reich's there. He was there when they drafted Jonathan Taylor. It's going to be a similar offense. Yeah, but they just they just paid Miles Sanders. Like they did, and they could potentially trade him to Indy as part of the deal, where he would be reunited with Shane Steichen. Ooh, that's fun. And be right back in a similar offense. Steichen clearly liked him. I went back and read quotes and all that stuff. And of course, a coach is going to say glowing things. But you saw what Sanders did last year in Philadelphia. He would get plenty of opportunities there. Um, I think it's going to take a bonehead franchise to acquire Jonathan Taylor and then pay him. What does he want? Like twelve million a year? That would make him a top five running back on the on the salary scale. Uh, Carolina <laughs> might be one of those bonehead franchises. And to be fair, they've got a, a quarterback who's on a rookie deal. So might be able to balance the cap for a few years with Bruce, Bryce Young's deal being what it is and Jonathan Taylor going there. I, I think it's actually a decent fit where it's like Sanders and a, a second round pick in 2025 for Jonathan Taylor. And then the Panthers back up the brink struck for Taylor. It's just so funny because, you know, when a running back gets paid, people say, God, this team is so stupid for paying a running back. And then when a running back becomes a free agent, we say this team is so pathetic for not paying this running back. <laughs> it's, it happens all the time, and it's, you know, it's it's just like, well, come on, we have to figure out what side we want to be on in this. Yeah. Um, like, all right, and, and I will say, if he's if he Philadelphia would be Philadelphia or Cincinnati are like the dream spots, but Philadelphia, oh, I, I don't, not I don't see spot. either franchise doing it. You think since he's a dream spot, they're not going to cut Mixon? If Mix, yeah, Mixon will go, and Taylor moves in and gets his workload, but. Cincinnati doesn't make trades like this. I don't think they would do it. And they've got their own contracts to extend in the very near future. And right, Philly, I, I, want to talk I don't see Philly about, giving $12 million to Jonathan Taylor. Do you? I want to talk about McCoy no. here. Uh, if we could move on. Uh, Terry it's, McCoy, it's, just, it's fun to talk about with Taylor. That's all. No, it certainly is. Um, I think we you know covered it pretty pretty well there. I bet his hair looks good today. <laughs> uh, McLaurin hurt his, his toe. Uh, x-rays were negative, might have a sprained toe. They start be with turf the toe, Adam. Cardinal. Yeah, that's no good. They start with the Cardinals in week one, then some tough matchups at Denver, Buffalo, at Philadelphia. Although Buffalo defense didn't look so good a couple of days ago. But ah, come on. all right, are, are you guys moving Terry McLaurin down in your rankings right now? We don't know too much at this point. Yeah, I'd rather draft Dotson. They're really close for me. Um yeah, I, I could see myself moving McLaurin down at least one, three, four, three or four spots among my receivers. Behind who? He would go behind Drake London. He would go behind Kirk, Michael Williams, Ayuk, potentially Jordan Addison as well. Maybe probably Jordan Addison as well. And man, Dotson. They both Dotson, really yes. Yeah, Dotson can move up too. We'll talk about that game in a moment. Washington play their starters on offense for the first half against the Ravens backups. And yeah. they good, thankfully. <laughs> uh, They've only looked good this preseason against backups. When they took on the Browns starters without Miles Garrett, they were a mess. And so yeah. they, they had a week to fix it, and they, they did look much improved. The offensive line looked mostly better uh, against Baltimore's backups. Devon A. Chain, week to week with a shoulder injury. We don't know much about Joe Burrow right now, but uh, Zach Taylor, the head coach, said Joe Burrow looks great walking around. So the reports have been good, but He'll he's not fine. out there doing much. All right. He'll be fine. Miles Sanders returned to practice. Eagles, I did not hear this, guys. I did not listen. I don't know if you had a chance to, but Eagles beat reporter Bo Wolf was on the Athletic Football Podcast, and I guess he said that he thinks the Eagles want it to be DeAndre Swift's backfield. But he also predicted that Kenneth Gainwell will end up playing the most just because he's been dependable. I don't know if that was an injury forecast for Swift, but I, I you know, I don't know. Well, wouldn't it make sense for the Eagles to want to try and keep Swift healthy all season so he can contribute every week? I don't know. You tell me around where you take all three of their running backs, 12 team league. Uh, I am at round eight for Swift. 
Uh, I have sunk Penny. I'm really not that interested. Late round nine, early round 10. Gain well, round 10. Okay. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco could play in this week's preseason game. Nice. Dolphins offensive lineman Robert Jones is out four to six weeks with a sprained MCL. He was competing for a starting spot. Uh, they are hopeful that Teron Armstead, their left tackle, will be back for week mm-hmm. one. And Baltimore's 24-game preseason win streak was snapped last night. We'll talk about that game in just a moment. I want 